Um, and welcome back to the Miskatonic. <laughs> Hope I got the pronunciation right this time. And we're back into it. So we left off with her doing the creepy eye thing. And this is her response. <laughs> and sometimes weird stuff happens in people's minds. Usually they forget something or get an eye twitch. As long as I don't use it on little animals, it's pretty harmless. <laughs> okay, so let's keep going. This is your room, a little tight, but the lunch ladies bring us security guys breakfast every day. I'll get you I'll let you get settled, then you can explore your patrol route until Bob gives you your first assignment. It's perfect. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, better go familiarize myself with the patrol route. So oh. Hello again, it's time for a quick tutorial, we? Oui? You're about to enter what's called patrol mode, wherein you're allowed to freely investigate the occult science building. Use your mouse to click characters to initiate conversations or doorways to move to the other places in the building. Need to move around? Charlotte's patrol will always start here, outside her room. If you want to save the game, hit the little cog in the bottom right of the screen. And don't forget to keep visit me at the Corporeum, we? Oui? Cog. Did I save? Hey! Yay! Okay. <laughs> and I spooky, how's your feet? <laughs> Why the fascination with my feet, Annie? Surely the ju juicy stuff for cannibals is like the brain or whatever. Oh no, no, no. Can't eat brains, my love. Eating brains gives you the shiggles. Shiggles? What's the shiggles? Shits and giggles. <laughs> An English disease <laughs> makes you shiver and laugh uncontrollably while you lose control of your body and then you die. Shiggles. Oh my god, I'm gonna use that from now on. Had a friend who had it back home. Significantly less hilarious than it sounds. That sucks, man. Yep, and now I'm all inconsolable. The only way to cheer me up is to give me a bite of your giant bum. Damn it, Annie, you almost had me feeling like you weren't a complete ass. <laughs> I won't need the complete ass, just half a cheek at most. <laughs> okay, that was pretty clever. Okay. I'm here all week. <laughs> I like it, she's funny. Nico Day. You're the new security girl, right? I'm Nico Day. Arch Arch Archivist of the Occult Science Building. Feel free to tell me your deepest and darkest. Uh, okay, I left school when I was nine to become a witch and quietly hope that schools don't teach people anything important past that. Interesting. And they do, by the way. Quite a bit. <laughs> oh. Well. Shit. <laughs> don't listen to him. If you can count and spell, everything else is optional. Roger Cavendish, Chief Medical Officer. Why has he got tentacles? And what does that tell you? You can do more than count and spell, right, Doctor? Well, a few things. Bringing people back from the brink of a terrible... Baphometic death? Creating vaccines for supernatural diseases? Have you ever seen a prosthetic tentacle? Don't get him started on his damn prosthetic tentacle. Any more little nuggets of secrecy, Charlotte? Um... Okay, here's a fine one. People think that I cook my... I cock my hips all the time because it's a Shabnagurath witch coven thing. But really it's because I'm secretly proud of my butt. <laughs> it's a good butt. <laughs> rest of me sucks, but it's a damn good butt. <laughs> On behalf of all cannibals, thank you for sharing it with the world. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. So... I'm subbing a class for one of the astro astronomy guys, right? And substituting means it's time to watch a documentary in the lecture hall. And everyone's watching this thing, and it's like, closest star to our solar system is about 4.5 light years away, and you thought you felt lonely. <laughs> and I'm like, why would you assume that? Why would you assume that about literally every person who watches this thing? I grew up in a coven surrounded by spell-slinging psycho bitches, and now I work in a university. I salivated the concept of loneliness. <laughs> Wonder if they say that in nature documentaries too, trying to make weird animals relatable. <laughs> yeah, and you thought you sprayed pungent urine at attacking predators. <laughs> and 
you thought you had projectile tongue that was sticky at the end so you could catch cute bugs. And you thought you had a four-headed penis. <laughs> what the F has a four-headed penis? Echidnas? No way! Maybe girl echidnas are into the whole eldritch horror kink. <laughs> Guy echidnas gotta step their game up and turn their peens into horrific nightmares. <laughs> I have no argument for this. Oh my god, this is funny. Look at her arms. Her arms? No anymore. Anika Silverstein. Ah, oh, it's a new security. Anika Silverstein, alien theology. Caleb Wakenshaw, pun enthusiast. Hell yeah. Charlotte Lestrange, badass witch cop. <laughs> so what happens to the last security guy? Are they on sick retirement? Adventures? Last I heard, he landed in Aruba. Then the rest of him landed in Cancun. <laughs> oh god. Yes, quite tragic. Entire occult science building exploded, leaving only a crater, oddly filled with indentations of the faces of the workers and students who were in them. That was before our time, of course. Since we are alive and whatnot. Huh. But there's like protections from that happening again, right? Oh yeah, they put a sneeze guard in. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well. <laughs> Marina, did you know before it was completely abandoned, Innsmouth desperately tried to become a tourism town? Try to focus on aquatic creatures, gift shops, and freak shows featuring leftover dead deep ones. I happen to be named most attractive deep one hybrid every weekly beauty contest. Ah, oh, you don't look like a deep one. That's probably why I kept winning. The deep one. Okay, go through doors. Oh. No. Yes, okay. E. Four people. Davis Tilling. All my classes are at 7 a.m. Got any ideas for a book that'll help me wake up in the morning? Simon Longfellow. Ah, you'll want internalized zombification in the ne necrology aisle. All the benefits of being a zombie without the drawbacks of looking like a corpse. So your intestines will occasionally fall out of your butthole. Ah, <laughs> uh, they must have a book for everything. Though I'd take coffee over scooping intestines back into my butthole. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Amelia Lynn Luciet. A fun trick of the black magic users of the old days was to write how-to spellbooks, and simply by reading them you would cast the curse that the reader was trying to learn on the reader themselves. Fiendish but funny, according to them. What happened to your eye holes? How to throw ethereal fire directly into somebody's eyes. Luckily it was just the Cliff Notes version. Ugh, ouch. And here. Hi Emily, do you have do you guys have any books on advanced witchcraft? I want to keep fresh while I'm here. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'll take that as an of course we do, Charlotte. Have you seen the size of the goddamn library? We got books that ain't even been written yet. <laughs> <laughs> Science of Rain Dancing by Professor Anna Undercarriage. Huh, guess maybe I'll fit in here. A little better than I thought. I've been doing science all this time. Much like electricity, the human body acts as a conductor of magical energy. Intris intrinsic in the air of <laughs> regions of high concentration. This effort is ex exacerbated with wet skin leading to many witch cults dancing naked in the rain in order to conjure spells effectively. Indeed it seems paranormal encounters seem more frequent when it's raining, or in the regions of the world where rain is frequent. The witch cults of Seattle and Scotland are considered incredibly powerful and fearsome, though this is simply due to their geographical advantage. Were they to be taken away from their home deluges, they would simply be they would be simply as effective as their new weather permits them to be. Interesting. Ah, uh, sick burn. <laughs> Hello, wobbly wobbly. <laughs> what you reading? Nothing, just some stuff about witches. You wouldn't get it. Nah, probably not. That stuff's too cool and magical for a dumb old cannibal like Annie. No place for an ugly old purple blood like poor old dumb cannibal Annie. 
Poor Darmani. Well, hey, come on, I didn't mean it like that. Hey, next time it rains, I could teach you a few tricks. How about it? Get you a pet frog, give it a couple of extra eyes, what you say? That sounds fun, but can I make a suggestion? Um, sure I guess. Rather than rain, can we dance around in buffalo sauce? I think that's what a, a little zing when I bite- I think I want a little zing when I bite your bum. <laughs> Damn it, Annie! Why don't you go bug someone else? Because you're the only one that finds it funny. <laughs> There's a difference between laughing at something because it's funny and laughing at someone because it's ridiculous. Most folks run away from folks like me. They seem to take threats of being devoured quite seriously. And there's nothing I'd like more than watching you run away, Charlotte. <laughs> oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see you around, Annie. <laughs> That's funny. Militia bit. Oh, I don't even know. So, what's with the puppets? We help her talk with unfamiliar people on unfamiliar subjects. One most. One must become more familiar with us in order to become more familiar with her. She's cool. Spent a little too long in the psychology department, huh? I've heard researching all them dark psychiatrics and rub off on people. And you spent a little too long in engineering to not know when someone's pulling your leg. Hmm, so working and studying in certain buildings has a residual effect. I wonder what the effect of working in the occult science building has on witches. I would I start talking to a chalkboard to my coven's dance rituals. <laughs> no one wants to know the angle of rotation on one of my sick freeballing pirouettes. <laughs> hey, it's Lizzie! Go away, flies. Hey, Lizzie, what you got there? Really, cheese is the best human invention. Everyone says so. Everyone like everyone in the university? Everyone in this dimension. The Maigo, the Yithians, the Starspawn, Onians. When someone makes one for them, the homeworld, the, in the homeworld elder things. Even Yog Sahuth likes one now and again. Really? Not like the internal combustion engine. Not penicillin, not the telephone, light bulbs, eyeglasses, big, big train, microscopes. Nah, we don't need any of that. <laughs> So humanity for all its achievements, all the love and loss, all the wars, all the technology and innovation, all the art and culture, everything that we've done, and we're considered by far by the rest of the universe as those guys that make mean grilled cheese. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> So hey, why do so many people have tentacles coming out of their backs? Have you ever faced a bafo neurotic explosion head-on? Necrotic explosion head-on? No, I can't say that I have. Neither has anyone else. First rule of bafo necrotic explosions, turn away from the bafo necrotic explosion. Well, I guess the first rule would be don't cause a goddamn bafo necrotic, neuro necro uh, necrotic explosion. But people can't seem to help breaking that one. Uh, you can probably tell from the lack of extra limbs, but I have no idea what bafo whatever actually is. It's the process of deliberately caving in an artificial portal through our dimension, to stop extra dimensional entities from getting out. It's a last resort since usually there are teams of portal divers still inside, but hey, better than the end of the world, huh? I guess. Hey, maybe you guys should try transmutation circles. That's what us witches use when we need to summon creepy stuff and none of my coven have any weird tentacles. All you need is chalk, a little blood, some candles, and a complete disregard for pants. Yes, yes, we've all been taught the witch method, but the scientific method reduces the element of randomness, increases the size and duration of the portals to allow for human entry, and best of all, you get to keep your clothes on. <laughs> so science is magic plus underwear, huh? <laughs> Studying at the Miskatonic is a huge opportunity. There are so few monster hunters in my hometown. I think my job prospects in the future are pretty bright. It does come with a few drawbacks, though. You're not likely to finish your studies exactly the same species as when you started. Gosh. Well, hey, at the very worst, I'm pretty sure that this place could always use some more freaky-ass teachers. <laughs> Lovely. 
nothing out there for me, my jurisdiction's right here. Although patrolling the whole university would probably be good for the old leg muscles, get all toughened up in case of any sick monster attacks. Can't stand a lean steak myself, much prefer a pressed ham. <laughs> Stop trying to make me laugh any, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> So many people around. So what do you reckon they're doing in there? Poking and prodding the same as always. Eventually they'll get bored and we'll be tasked with carting off the husk. If you told tiny child Albert that in the future carrying corpses would be considered the easiest part of his day, I think he'd pitch a fit. I'd have thought the part between carrying the body to the corporeum and carrying it away would be the easiest part. Though I guess hanging out in the spooky ass hallway can be a little exhausting too. Indy in the morning. Just a small word of advice to the biology department. You can't just stick a dog and a war veteran and a war veteran into a centrifuge and rejigger the mush into living being. <laughs> and everyone say hello to the world's very first werewolf. There's clearly a reason I am not down there with you guys. <laughs> Aside from, you know, the carnage it would cause. Did you guys hear that? A goddamn werewolf. You guys want to check it out? We're not done here, Mike. We've got to get the incinerators going before we can knock off. Connor's right. First we burn whatever not nightmare the Corporeans working on, then we can go gawk at whatever nightmare the biology department's working on. They got their own burners, after all. I always thought you had to get bit by a werewolf to become a werewolf. Then again, why would any werewolf stop at one bite and not just eat whatever it was biting? Maybe that's why we don't have zombie plagues anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alright. Mm, what's down this way? Ew! Man, look at this sick, awesome thing. That tough stuff is a colony of cuddle worms, complete with the bloody spinal cord of their human host. <sighs> they like to lay their eggs in city water pipes, and once consumed, they attach to the spinal columns of their host, eventually controlling their every move. Sort of like zombies, except, you know, a lot more screaming and begging for death. We very interesting species. Ah, oh, gross. That is deceptively adorable name for the worst thing ever. I bet the boy's antenna that I could yank the spine out of the poor sod's mouth. Turns out the worms form a rock solid grip on the host's brain while they're piloting them. Oh. Fingers here is going to give him a prod, see if she can't get him to let go of the bugger's melon meat. Ugh. Nope, here we go. Excuse me, I just had a dark thought. Encouraging that I slit my wrist, take off your trousers, and place your bum like the. and play your bum like the bloody bongos. Probably better use bear blood, eh? Say la vie! <laughs> Our big strong man helping out little lady's sadistic madness cute. <laughs> That's so weird. Anyway, while we're standing in this hallway, I'm going to leave this video here. And I shall catch you all in the next video. Bye everybody!